The Maya civilization, flourishing from 2000 BC to the 16th century AD, left behind an array of monumental structures with the grandiosity and precision that continues to astound the modern world. These temples, pyramids and palaces dotted across the Yucatan Peninsula rise from the jungle as if defying the very gravity that binds us. The intricacy of the Mayan calendar, their written language and the astronomical alignments found within their architecture pose the question, was this the work of mere mortals or could there have been otherworldly assistance? Take, for example, the Temple of Kukulkan, also known as El Castillo, in Chichen Itza. On the spring and autumn equinoxes, the play of light and shadow on the pyramid staircase creates the illusion of a serpent descending, symbolizing the feathered serpent god, Kukulkan. Such a sight begs the question, how did the Maya acquire such complex astronomical knowledge? When we delve into the heart of the ancient astronaut theories concerning the Maya, we encounter a rich tapestry of art, architecture and myth that seems to some to extend beyond earthly origins. Proponents of these theories point to various artifacts and architectural marvels, claiming they could be evidence of extraterrestrial contact in ancient times. Take, for example, the intricate stelae and murals found in sites like Palenque and Bonampak. These ancient stones, etched with the history and cosmology of the Maya, depict what some believe to be figures in elaborate costumes that could be interpreted as some form of spacesuit. Particularly, the sarcophagus lid of the great ruler Pakal of Palenque has been at the center of alien speculation. The carving shows Pakal in what appears to be a reclined position, surrounded by what could be construed as machinery, perhaps even a spacecraft. Skeptics, however, argue that this is a depiction of the Mayan world tree and Pakal's descent into the underworld, part of the Maya's rich iconography and storytelling. Another piece of the puzzle is the Maya's apparent obsession with the stars. Their pyramids, like the ones found in the city of Uxmal, were not just tombs or temples, but were also aligned with celestial bodies and events. For the Maya, Venus was more than just a planet. It was a harbinger of war and a timekeeper for the cycles of their leaders and agriculture. The movements of Venus were tracked with such accuracy that some theorists suggest it was not just through careful observation, but through a knowledge given to them with hints of an extraterrestrial source. Beyond the alignment of their pyramids and the precision of their astronomical knowledge, the Maya's own creation stories speak of gods who descended from the sky. The Popol Vuh, the sacred book of the Maya, recounts the story of the hero twins who ascend to the heavens and converse with the gods themselves. For those inclined to believe in the ancient astronaut theories, such texts are not merely myth but a historical account of alien visitation. This blend of sophisticated knowledge with legends of gods from the stars creates a fertile ground for theories of ancient astronauts. It's a captivating idea that once upon a time beings from another world looked upon Earth and chose to impart wisdom to the ancient Maya, helping to create one of the most enigmatic civilizations known to history. The Mayan calendar is a testament to the complexity and sophistication of Mesoamerican science and cosmology, an intellectual heritage that continues to intrigue and baffle scholars and enthusiasts alike. This ancient timekeeping system is far more than a method to mark the days. It is an intricate web of cycles and epochs that interlock with the movements of celestial bodies, deeply rooted in Mayan mythology and worldview. One of the most famous aspects of the Mayan calendar is the Long Count, a cyclical calendar that spans roughly 5,126 years, ending on a date that many have associated with December 21, 2012. This particular date caused a modern-day stir, with some interpreting it as a prediction for the end of the world. In reality, for the Maya, it signified the end of a great cycle and the beginning of another, much like the odometer of a car rolling over to mark a new mileage. Within the long count are smaller cycles like the Tzolkin, a 260-day calendar which intertwines a sequence of 20-day names with 13 numbers, creating 260 unique day combinations that had both practical and ceremonial importance. It is believed this calendar was used for determining auspicious days for events such as sowing crops, warfare, and religious ceremonies. The Harb, a solar calendar, had 365 days and was used alongside the Tolkien to create a synchronized cycle called the Calendar Round, which would repeat every 52 Harb years. The precise alignment of their calendar with astronomical cycles is evidence of the Maya's extensive knowledge of astronomy. They were meticulous sky watchers, documenting the patterns of the moon, the apparitions of comets, 
and even the cycles of planets such as Venus and Mars with startling precision. Their observatories like the Caracol at Chichen Itza were marvels of architectural engineering designed to cast a watchful eye upon the heavens. The calendar also held a sacred aspect. The Maya believed that time was a living entity and that each day had a specific deity associated with it, which would influence the day's events. The interplay between the days, the deities and the celestial bodies formed a complex religious system that permeated every aspect of Maya life, from agriculture to leadership and identity. Much of what we know about the Maya calendar comes from codices, like the Dresden Codex, which is filled with astronomical tables that predict eclipses and the movements of planets with astonishing accuracy. It's this mastery of the cosmos, encapsulated in their calendric system, that has led some to speculate about the origins of their knowledge. Was it the result of generations of careful observation, or as some suggest, could it have been influenced by otherworldly sources? In the dense jungles of Mesoamerica, the ruins of the Mayan civilization whisper secrets of their advanced understanding of astronomy and the cosmos. Among these secrets are the astounding alignments and architectural anomalies that go far beyond aesthetic design and delve into the realm of the celestial. Take, for instance, the Pyramid of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza. Twice a year during the spring and autumn equinoxes, the setting sun casts a series of shadows on the steps of the pyramid that resemble the slithering body of a snake, culminating in the stone-carved head of Kukulkan at the base. This isn't just a coincidence. The Maya had engineered this astounding phenomenon with intentional precision, marrying their architectural prowess with their astronomical observations. This shadow play is not the only instance where architecture and cosmology intersect in Mayan culture. The orientations of many Mayan temples and pyramids align with the positions of the rising or setting sun on significant dates, such as the solstices. Some buildings are positioned in such a way that they frame the moon at its northernmost and southernmost zeniths. These structures served a dual purpose as both places of worship and sophisticated observatories that charted the movements of celestial bodies with an accuracy that rivals modern methods. But the anomalies don't stop at solar phenomena. The Maya had a particular reverence for Venus, a planet they associated with the god Kukulkan, and many of their ceremonial complexes seem to align with the cyclical appearance and disappearance of Venus in the night sky. The Dresden Codex, one of the few surviving pre-Columbian Maya books, contains detailed Venus tables that predict the planet's path with an error margin of just two hours every 500 years. Another anomaly lies in the city of Tikal, where a series of temples align perfectly with the stars of the Orion constellation, this configuration is not accidental. The Maya believed that the dark rift of the Milky Way, which they called the Zibalba Bee or Black Road, was the path to the underworld, and the Orion constellation played a key role in their cosmology. Even more curious is the city of Copan, with its hieroglyphic stairway that ascends towards the heavens, containing more Mayan glyphs than any other monuments in the region. The stairway itself seems to serve as a historical narrative, but also aligns with the sun on specific dates, possibly connected to the history it depicts. These architectural anomalies suggest that the Maya were not just building structures for the living or the dead, they were creating a landscape in sync with the heavens, a sort of dialogue between the earth and the sky. Each building, each city was a note in a grand cosmic composition that played out across their civilization. The sophistication of these alignments and the knowledge required to achieve them prompts a deeper question. Was this advanced understanding of astronomy and mathematics homegrown? Or is it possible that it was influenced by external forces, perhaps by encounters with advanced travelers from beyond our world? While mainstream archaeology credits centuries of accumulated knowledge and cultural evolution, the idea of extraterrestrial influence remains a tantalizing possibility for many. The architectural marvels of the Mayan civilization remain not only as a testament to their religious and cultural beliefs, but also as an embodiment of their engineering acumen and sophisticated knowledge systems. Deep within the Central American rainforest, structures such as pyramids, temples and entire cities reflect a level of advanced engineering that seems almost anachronistic for their time. Among the many feats of Mayan engineering, the water systems of Palenque stand out. 
they constructed an intricate network of aqueducts, underground channels and reservoirs to manage the flow of water with precision. The genius of this design is evident in the way it mitigated flooding during heavy rains, conserved water for periods of drought and even controlled water pressure. They used the natural incline of the land to their advantage, showcasing an understanding of hydraulic engineering that was incredibly advanced for a civilization of the pre-industrial era. In terms of materials, while the Maya lacked access to metals like iron or steel, they nonetheless erected structures that have withstood the test of time. They developed a type of concrete from burning limestone and mixing it with water, creating a substance that hardened over time. This material was often used in conjunction with their detailed stonework. The precise way the Mayans cut and fitted these stone blocks together, often without the use of mortar, is a marvel of construction. Some of these joints are so tight that even a sheet of paper cannot be inserted between the stones. The Mayans also displayed a profound understanding of acoustics. The Great Ball Court at Chichen Itza, for example, is an architectural phenomenon. If a person claps their hands at one end, the sound creates a series of echoes that mimic the chirp of the sacred Quetzal bird. This is no simple echo, but a sophisticated manipulation of sound waves, deliberately achieved through the dimensions and textures of the structure. Such intentional acoustic effects are also found in their temples and pyramids, where footsteps ascend to sound like raindrops, and spoken words can travel across vast courtyards with clarity. Then there's the mystery of the Mayan arch, known as the Corbel Vault. Unlike the true arches of Roman construction, the Mayan arch consists of stepped corbel stones that project inward from the walls until they meet at a peak. While this method did not allow for the support of massive structures above, it was perfectly suited to the materials and climate of the Mayans, facilitating the construction of expansive upper-level rooms and impressive doorways. Imagine traversing the highlands of Peru and stumbling upon the ruins of Machu Picchu. This ancient Inca site, perched between the stark peaks of the Andes, is not just a wonder of the world, but also a marvel of engineering that leaves even the most skeptical visitor in awe. The Incas constructed this citadel without the wheel, without iron tools, and without a written plan, yet its buildings, terraces, and ramps blend seamlessly into the mountain topography. What's particularly astonishing is the precision with which the Incas cut and fitted stones, some of these stones weigh well over 50 tons, yet they interlock with such exactness that the joints don't permit the passage of a hair. This level of detail suggests more than just architectural prowess. It whispers of an intimate understanding of geology, geometry and astronomy. The stones themselves, some believe, carry a celestial secret. The Inca civilization revered the heavens, and their builders oriented the entire city astronomically. Certain windows and doorways align perfectly with the solstices, while others frame mountains that were sacred to their cosmology. There's a rhythmic pattern to these structures that seems to echo the celestial dance of stars and planets. Then there's the question of how these massive stones were transported. Legends speak of a mystical technique involving the use of sound to levitate the boulders. While this sounds like the stuff of science fiction, it aligns with the Inca's advanced knowledge of acoustics, evidenced by places like the Saksai Waman Fortress where even a whisper can carry across great distances due to the architecture's acoustic properties. The method of cutting the stones is equally baffling. Some stones have perfectly straight cuts and angles that would challenge modern power tools. Theories abound, from the use of a plant with acidic properties to soften rock, to the possibility of advanced ancient technologies lost to time. The lack of definitive evidence has allowed speculation to flourish, with some postulating that these cutting methods are not of this world. Moreover, the way these structures have withstood the test of time and resisted earthquakes is further testimony to their engineering. The Incas employed a technique known as ashlar masonry, where stones are cut to fit together without mortar. Remarkably, during seismic activity, these stones dance. They move and then settle back into place, unharmed. This isn't just construction. It's a harmonious dialogue with the Earth's movements. One of the most tantalizing and mysterious legacies of the Inca civilization is the discovery of elongated skulls. These cranial deformations have spurred a wealth of speculation and intrigue, leading some to propose connections with otherworldly beings or unknown practices. The Inca culture, along with other Andean civilizations, practiced cranial deformation, 
a custom where the skulls of infants were intentionally modified through binding, resulting in elongated shapes as the child grew. It is a tradition found in many different cultures worldwide, but the prevalence and extremes to which it was taken in Inca society have captured the imagination of historians and enthusiasts alike. To the Incas, the elongated shape of the skull was associated with beauty, status, and nobility. It was likely that the practice began as an imitation of a naturally occurring genetic trait, a status symbol that distinguished the elite from the common populace. Skull deformation began shortly after birth, when the infant's skull was most pliable. Boards and tightly bound cloth were used to gradually alter the shape of the head over time. These skulls have led to various theories, ranging from the plausible to the fantastical. Some suggest that the Incas might have been trying to emulate the appearance of an esteemed ancestor or a revered figure from their mythology. Others have taken the presence of these skulls as evidence of ancient astronaut theories, suggesting that the Incas were mimicking beings from beyond the stars. Surgical skill is another aspect highlighted by Inca skulls. Not only did they modify skulls for aesthetic and cultural reasons, but they also performed successful cranial surgeries, trepanation for medical purposes. These surgeries often removed small pieces of the skull following trauma to reduce pressure and allow healing. The survival rate of these procedures was remarkably high for pre-modern surgery, attesting to their medical knowledge and skill. In the shadows of the Andean mountains lies evidence of a civilization that, at its peak, stretched over much of South America. The Incas, known for their sophisticated society and strikingly complex urban planning, were not just builders but artisans of the land who seemed to have a profound connection with their environment. Their architectural feats are not merely structures, they are symphonies of stone and earth, harmonizing with the undulating landscapes. One of the most puzzling aspects of Incan architecture is its diversity and adaptation to the challenging terrain of the Andes. From the arid coastal plains to the steep highlands, Inca structures were tailored to their surroundings with such efficiency that modern engineers still study their techniques. For instance, the city of Pisac is a testament to the Inca's understanding of agricultural and urban planning. It features an integration of water management and terrace farming that maximizes the arable land area turning steep mountainsides into lush, productive gardens. The use of terracing is a marvel in itself. These weren't just simple dirt embankments. The Incas constructed multi-layered terraces with a sophisticated drainage system to prevent waterlogging and soil erosion. Beneath the surface of each terrace lies a complex layering of sand, gravel and rock that filters water and ensures the survival of crops even in the harshest of droughts. And then there's Olante Tambo, a fortress that doubles as a temple, exhibiting both the defensive might and the spiritual aspirations of the Inca. It is home to some of the most massive stones ever used in Inca construction, which were transported from quarries miles away. The logistics of such an endeavor are mind-boggling, especially considering the steep terrain and lack of wheel-based transportation. Inca stonework is yet another enigma. The precision of their cuts is so remarkable that it often appears as if the stones have been molded like clay. No mortar was used, the stones are so exquisitely carved and wedged that they have survived centuries of earthquakes. This masonry was not merely functional but also symbolic, often representing the Inca's relationship with nature. The famous 12-angled stone in Cusco is not just an architectural wonder, but a symbol of the Inca's ability to master the wild, unruly forces of the earth and bind them into a coherent, ordered form. Their cities, like Machu Picchu, defy conventional understanding. Placed high in the clouds, these urban centers were self-sufficient, with advanced water channels and storage systems, ensuring a constant supply of fresh water. The careful placement of buildings to catch the morning sun or to provide a windbreak speaks of a detailed knowledge of the environment and an ability to adapt structures to serve both practical and ceremonial purposes. Indeed, their architectural achievements seem almost superhuman, which fuels speculations about where the Incas could have acquired such knowledge. Some believe that their wisdom was not of this earth, given to them by visitors from the stars who left no other trace than these marvels of stone and soil. This theory is bolstered by the Inca's own mythology, which tells of Viracocha, the creator god who came from the sea and taught the Incas all they knew before heading into the west. On the arid plains of the Peruvian desert, 
The Nazca lines sprawl across the landscape like a vast tapestry of geoglyphs etched into the earth. These monumental figures range from geometric shapes to zoomorphic designs, including spiders, monkeys, and even what some interpret as astronauts. Their sheer scale defies immediate comprehension and their purpose is cloaked in mystery. Created by the Nazca culture around 500 BCE to 500 CE, these lines were formed by the simple but laborious technique of removing the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca Desert and uncovering the contrasting whitish ground beneath. Most of the figures are so large that they can only be fully appreciated from the air, a fact that has tantalized observers and led to rampant speculation about their creator's intended audience. Theories about the line's purpose range from the astronomical to the divine. One prevailing theory suggests that the lines function as a sort of astronomical calendar, with certain lines aligning to the positions of the sun, moon and stars at pivotal times of the year, such as solstices. This celestial alignment indicates a sophisticated knowledge of astronomy and a deep need to intertwine their cultural and spiritual practices with the heavens above. Another theory posits that the lines may have played a role in pilgrimage rituals. The lines could have directed processions to sites of great ritual importance, with the shapes perhaps symbolizing animals and objects of religious significance. Imagine lines of worshippers tracing the contours of these immense drawings, a physical and spiritual journey across the sacred landscape, the lines guiding not just their path, but their meditative state. The lines have also been linked to water, a precious resource in such a parched environment. Some researchers have speculated that the geoglyphs were part of a complex system related to water worship and water conservation. With each figure potentially representing a plea to the gods for rain, or perhaps marking the location of underground water sources, the Nazca lines may be a grand expression of the community's collective struggle for survival in an unforgiving climate. Adding to their mystery is the method of construction, the precision with which the lines were made suggests careful planning and coordination, yet the Nazca people left no written records of their methods. It's believed that they used simple tools and surveying equipment made from sticks and ropes, but the execution of such large-scale figures with such accuracy points to a highly organized society with a strong sense of communal effort. Moreover, the durability of the lines is nothing short of astonishing. In a region where winds can whip up sand with fierce intensity, the lines have remained largely undisturbed for over a millennium. This is partly due to the climate one of the driest on Earth and the hard clay-like soil, which is baked solid by the sun. Recent discoveries made using modern technology have uncovered even more lines, suggesting that what we see today may only be a fraction of what existed. These new figures, which include more human-like images, add depth to the enigma of the Nazca lines. They underscore our still-evolving understanding of this ancient culture, and they remind us that the Earth holds many secrets, silently waiting beneath our feet. And as always, we hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching.